But they sent in a massive security team. And they also had quite a lot of volunteers. I, I'm afraid to ask, but I think we're going to have to volunteer for what? This is the tavern? For some reason, this reminds me more of the sublight. Come here. Let's have a chat. Facility on Groundbreaker. Yeah, busy here, isn't it? Hi. All right, inspection time. Look at my eyes for as long as you can without blinking. Starting now. Okay. Good. Look up. Now look down. Uh, okay. You're doing swell. Now, name and occupation. Uh, Zarkov Chaos, Captain of the Unreliable. Yeah, no, you first. No, Zarkov Chaos, Captain of the Unreliable. I will, I will start off these introductions. Good enough for me. You're cleared to pass. That was a sanity check. If you had changed like the others, it'd be in your eyes. You'd also be drooling, cursing, and making a mess of the place. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. You can head on downstairs. What? What did you mean you said people had checked? Yeah, no, let's just go with what? Every day, salvagers and scrappers set out to comb the ruins and make their fortune. The ones who come back. They aren't always the same men or women who left. They change. Never for the better. Okay. And what happens if people change? First they get real twitchy and paranoid, shouting at folks who aren't there. Then they smell like they soiled themselves, on account of how they soiled themselves. After that, they're gone. Nothing but animals wearing human skin. Seen it happen myself. It's never pretty. What well, no, we were we definitely don't classify for any of those. Except perhaps occasionally shouting at people that are not there, but that's in completely understandable circumstances. But everything else, definitely not. Definitely no drooling, no you know spoiling our outfits, so to speak. Where exactly am I? This is the Sprat Shack, the most remote watering hole in the system. Rule number one, no fighting. Rule number two, wipe your feet on the way downstairs. There's a downstairs. We're the only hospitable place on this rock. I want to keep it that way. Got it. That's why we have rule number three. When people change, they stay outside where they belong. And by change, you mean gibbering, drooling, filling one's underpants. Yes, not change of outfit. Okay. Uh, yeah, when you said no fighting, I was thinking, like, who the hell are we gonna fight? But, um, let me ask you something else. Just don't ask me to dance. That was definitely not on the list of things I was going to ask you. Um... E what do you know about Gorgon? Something bad happened here. Spacer's Choice was developing chemicals. The kind with nasty side effects. Marauders outnumber the rest of us ten to one. Either they came from Gorgon, or something draws them here. I don't know which is worse. This place is under a dark cloud, stranger. That's all I know. If you want the history of the Sprat Shack, talk to Lex behind the bar. Right, okay. Ten to one's not bad odds, actually. In fact, uh, probably, uh, it's a little unfair of me to go up against them. Um, what are you do around here? What kind of people come to the Sprat Shack, apart from apparently drooling, pant-filling types? This is a sublight bar, so most I of our regulars it. come to plunder the old labs. It was... The facility's locked up behind miles of red tape, so progress is slow. 
A lot of time to drink and reevaluate, then venture out and try again. I mean, it was partly the outfit, but just the whole place gives off that vibe. Okay, what do people do around here, apart from fight, drool, fill pants? Bouncer, bodyguard, law enforcer. I make sure the Sprat Shack gets only the highest caliber of clientele. And I thought this place was going to be fun. We get a lot of brand loyal That's corporate Ellie. types and a lot of cutthroat freelancer types. Both sides have their share of dirty scoundrels. And I hate dirt. Well, we are neither dirty nor are we scoundrels, are we? Hmm? Ellie might seem a little scoundrelish, but it's all an act. Don't worry about it. And Sam's my cleaning robot. Stay cool. So we're, um... Definitely not dirty. As for whether or not you could classify him as a scoundrel, well, you, you know, depends on your view of robots, I guess. Okay, so we just... Smell that? Cheap whiskey and stale cigarettes. My kind of place. Right, you got that just for... Oh, there it is. You got that just from entering the elevator. Okay. This is not exactly... Oh. See, now that's more what I was expecting. That is definitely... Oh, there's Lassie. Maybe that's what she was... She was a he, she? I can't... I don't remember. Trying to show us. Do sprats have... I'm about to start asking questions about uh, Sprat sexual reproduction. That is not a good sign. It... I really do get the feeling that Sprat wants us to go up there. Hello, Lex. Welcome to the Sprat Shack. First one's on the house and I won't even water it down. What will it be? Ooh, um, mm, whiskey, I'm feeling refined. Wine, make it purple, buddy. I'm in a chipper mood. Spectrum vodka, I want to see colours. No, 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 whiskey, I'm feeling refined. Because that's what whiskey is. Definitely. Very refined. Bottoms up. I assume you're here for salvage. Sure, got any leads? Even if I did, I ain't supposed to play favourites. Most of my regulars are sublight scavengers. They pick over the ruins of Gorgon, spend their earnings at the bar, and uh, head back out the next day. Vicious cycle, but that's life. You're the first new face I've seen in a while. Um, okay. So, what do you know about Gorgon? Spacer's Choice used to brew pharmaceuticals in these parts. Pharmaceuticals. That's why the asteroid smells like an old gym sock. They say Adrena time came from here. Just down the road at the old R&D lab. Very hush-hush back in the day. Okay. Um, would any of your regulars perhaps have information about Gorgon for someone who's just mildly curious as a way to pass the time? Roscoe might tell you more. He spent some time around here before the bar opened up. I trust him well enough. Okay. There's always Leonora. My favorite customer over in the storage room on the second floor. Storage room. Keeps to herself floor. and always closes out her tab. Okay, well, what's Roscoe's story? He's been here since opening day. I think he told me he was some kind of journalist. Ooh. He got left behind when Spacer's Choice pulled out. And I guess no one's coming to get him. Oh, okay. why'd he get left behind? He didn't tell me and I didn't ask. I'm his bartender, not his human resources rep. Okay. If you believe the chatter, a lot of good folks got left behind, and a lot of bad folks made it out. Sometimes, that's all there is to it. Very true. Poor bastard, you looking out for him? Roscoe's drinks are on the house. We all know how it feels to get left behind. He'll be all right. He's with the family now, and we take care of our own. The family. I, I heard the. It was very... Definite. Um, is that the Sublight family? Because I'm all in with Sublight. Yes, been helping out. Uh, what can you tell me about Leonora? Nice lady. Been coming around a lot these past few months. She isn't with Sublight, but seems to know the lay of the land better than anyone. She spends most of her days drinking alone. 
I think she's looking to hire someone. If you're open to a side gig. We're always open to side gigs. Um, do you know if she spoke with Lucky Montoya at all? Sort of like showing my hand a little bit there, but okay. You know Lucky? Huh, small yeah. asteroid. We've Now that you mention it, sort of I thought met. I saw those two sharing stories over a pint. Didn't think twice about it. I don't speak ill of the dead, but Leonora deserves better company. Okay. That Lucky was no good for her. Lucky and Lenora knew each other. So you knew Lucky, though? Lucky? Sure, I knew him. He could get a little dramatic at times, but he was a good guy. Heard he took dramatic. on a dangerous job. Terrible. Spent a lot of time coming and going from the office of Creative Incubation, just down the road. Creative Incubation? The office of Creative Incubation. I mean, to be honest with you, whichever adjective you were going to use there, the office of anything incubation was always going to sound sinister. But the creative incubation? I mean... Go on. The way he talked about the job, you just knew Lucky had hit pay dirt. Not that I was jealous. Around here, that sort of luck can be uh, hazardous to your health. Oh, awful shame about what happened to him. Ooh. Forget the story. What? No, what happened? I know about the severed arm, but the rest is a mystery. No, no, no. You did let... Yeah, no. You tell me what happened. You really want to hear my story? <laughs> Lol. Most everyone around here is sick to death of it by now. Last I saw of Lucky was a few days ago. I went outside for a smoke and a stroll, and I saw this wild canid dragging a bloody limb. So I kicked the cane and scared it off. Definitely sounds like Lucky, doesn't it? Um, go on. Why not let the cane enjoy the juicy limb? No, go on. Get this. The cane was chewing on an honest-to-law human arm. Lucky's arm. Okay, I'm going to assume that was his other arm, unless you found it and placed an item in its hand and then mailed it to me. Uh... Out of curiosity, how did you know it belonged to Lucky? I'm a bartender. Attention to detail is my middle name. You anyway, have a long middle name, the too. The arm was clutching okay. a phonograph that mentioned someone named Alex Hawthorne. No, it was the same one. I did some poking around, and this Hawthorne has a reputation among the uh, <clears throat> salvagers who frequent the bar. So I packaged up the arm nice and tidy and sent it care of the Halcyon Parcel Service. They even gave me a discount on the hazardous waste removal stamp. Now, you, 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 you didn't perhaps think maybe send the, the recording and not the arm? Like, the arm might not necessarily be required? Uh, what, yeah, why bother sending the arm at all? This, yes, that's the I figured Hawthorne would want to know what happened to his pal. Help Lucky get his affairs in order, you know. Oh, I hate to see people go with unfinished business. Okay. That's, that's nice, but maybe just write it down on a note. I found this along with Lucky's arm, which was no longer attached to his body. You could have even taken a photograph and sent it. You didn't need to send the arm. It, you know what? It, it's not that important. Um, I'm actually Hawthorne's next of kin, kind of, sort of, in a really roundabout way, and I received your uh, interesting package. Or was it a parcel? No, it was a parcel. No kidding. And now you're here? Colony feels smaller than you'd think some days. Yeah. I'm glad I was here to see this uh, confluence of events, you know? <laughs> the stars really aligned on this one. Good to... And here I am, smack dab in the middle. Yay! Brilliant. So where was Lucky staying? Third floor. Once I figured he wasn't coming back to pay his tab, I left his room unlocked to air it out. You can help yourself to anything you left behind. Ooh. Fair warning, I've been letting the regulars use it for a quick lie down. Just wash your hands when you're done. Always. Oh, oh. Always. But before I go, though, so you, you run this place all by yourself? Yes and no. The Sprat Shack used to be a shipping and receiving warehouse during the old Project Gorgon days. 
When Spacer's Choice pulled their guys off world, Sublight moved in to uh, salvage what we could, and they put me in charge. Okay, fair enough. So Sublight owns the Sprat Shack now. Yes and no. Rumor I'm going to hear that there's an awful a lot, aren't I? Wandering around the groundbreaker, and he's the legal owner of the Sprat Shack. Hagen's idea. Okay. Dare I ask why a Sprat owns the bar? See, Hagen didn't want a paper trail that led back to her, so she gave the bar to the Sprat. If there were any legal problems with this place, the Sprat would do the time. You know, they do something similar in Byzantium. Fancier system, but same idea. Anyway, that's what the paperwork says. I don't make the rules. <laughs> okay, so, like... I know I've got more important things to talk about, but how would you even know which Sprat is the right one? Does it matter? Easy. His name's Matt. The beautiful Matt thing is, Spratt. no one could tell Matt Sprat apart from an ordinary vermin. I think that's kind of the point, to send the authorities on a wild Sprat chase. I, I, yeah, I will try not to step on him if I happen by the groundbreaker. Yeah. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. The Sprat Shack's gone through a lot of title holders over the years. As far as business arrangements go, this one's a head-scratcher, but they say it's all above board, so that's what matters. Right, right. Um, and does Spacer's Choice not, you know, have a an issue with you squatting in their warehouse? Do they mind at all? Yes and no. Yes We're doing and no. A lot there more we are than again. Squatting. We're classing up the joint. Keeping the riffraff outside, where it belongs. They didn't even serve drinks until I arrived. Talk about wasted potential. Can you answer any question without starting with yes and no? And bear in mind, I rather like you, but if you do begin the answer with yes and no, I may start to dislike you just a tad. Yes and no. Again, that one was Hagen's idea. She told me that speaking in vague terms keeps you out of trouble. And I don't want any trouble in my place. Okay, that was slightly less annoying than I thought it was going to be. Okay, no, that, yeah, it's annoying, but okay, you've been told to say it. Okay, never mind. How do you guys get supplies in and out of this place, then? Thirsty people come and go from all over the colony. Mostly on the way to somewhere better. Some are well-connected. And not everyone pays with bits. That's how we get the unconventional goods anyhow. Sublight keeps us well stocked with the essentials, by which I mean booze. Right. Out of curiosity then, what do you... I'll set them up. You knock them back. Have for sale. You're selling ammo? You're... You actually have out... Fits. What do you have? I mean, you've got something called Cat's Eye Pressure Helm that sneak attack 25% more damage. Hack 5. This, God, that's expensive, though. I've got the money. I've got the money. And I sort of need... Well, I need. I need it. It's a thing. I don't have this thing. I need to have this thing. Okay, thank you very much. So, do we want to check upstairs or do we want to ask around here a little first? I'm thinking, uh... Okay, we, we can ch check around here later. We can talk to people downstairs. Now... I wouldn't get too close to that railing, just in case. Okay, thank you for the warning. Right, and it was the third floor, she said. Your own would love this place. Right, we will, we, will, we will definitely work our way down chatting to people, but for now, let's try and... What have you got there? Adrena time, I think. I found some in an old busted crate. You're just gonna take some drug you found in the garbage? It's not some drug. It's Adrena time. You think? I don't see a label. If it wasn't safe, it wouldn't be in a syringe. I can't argue with that. 
Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can make several very good arguments against that because what she said is utterly moronic. However, I think we're just going to put this down to one of those, um, well, possibly good for the gene pool moments. Is this the room she was talking about? That one's barred. And, oh, no, it could be this one, I suppose. Someone's in here. Oh, lol. It's coming back up again. Nope, nope, sorry, sorry. No, uh, I'm, uh, I've no idea what you're doing. In fact, you might be doing something completely different to what I imagine, and you're just pretending to get rid of me. But well done, because it worked. Oh. <sighs> okay. Requires a code to, oh. He's asleep. Um, so, we're looking for something. We've got a book. Case notes. We've got his case notes. Day one. Spacer's choice may have left in a hurry, but they didn't forget to lock the doors on their way out. Most of the facilities are sealed up tighter than a top runger's safe. Time to do some digging. Caught a break today. Met a scavenger who claims to be a salesman for Spacer's choice. Sold me a key to the office of creative incubation. What are they incubating? Let's just say this guy's about as lucid as a sprat in a Rizzo's factory, but I'm spending Minnie's bits so he can afford to take a chance. Day seven, it worked. Clarence mostly, whoever you are, I'm drinking to you tonight. Day 10, Olivia Ambrose's office and journal ought to be in the synthesis and manufactory, manufactory center. The bad news is it's sealed up and at the ass end of the canyon. The good news is I should be able to open it from the big wigs admin terminal in OCI. Day 13. OCI is crawling with marauders and I've got a few of the leads to chase down. Could be nothing, but my gut tells me there's more to this place than a missing journal. Time to turn over a few rocks and see what crawls out. Something that's going to... Well, I was going to say bite your arm off, but I think it's the other way round. Bite everything except your arm. I'm leaving the OCI key in the safe. The combo is 4815. Okay, anything else? No, okay, so we've got the safe combo. And we've got a preserved eye. As a medical professional, I gotta say, that is very well preserved and disgusting. I would have probably done that in the opposite order, but, um, yeah, that's, um, that's an eyeball. Sold me a key to the Office of Creative Incubation, and key is in quotation marks. So it's some sort of ocular scanner then, yes? Let's just say this guy's about as lucid as a sprat in a Rizzo's factory, but I'm spending Minnie's bits so I can afford to take a chance. It worked. Clarence mostly, whoever you are, I'm drinking to you tonight. Is this the previous owner of the eyeball? Not, not the scavenger that sold the thing to Lucky. The original owner of the eyeball, although I suppose in this place you're probably going to say that uh, Spacer's Choice is the owner of the eyeball. Have we heard that name before? We've been getting a lot of names, and I've forgotten many of them. Okay, it doesn't matter. You found an eyeball in Lucky's room that apparently grants access to the Office of Creative Incubation on Gorgon. According to Lucky's notes, the administrative terminal in OCI should unseal the way to Olivia Ambrose's office in the Synthesis and Manufactory Centre. All right, brilliant. So we've got... We've got an eyeball and a severed hand. Good grief. Are we are we going to have, like, an entire body by the end of this trip? Are we going to be able to sort of 
put them all together. Okay, let's not finish that thought process. Let's wander downstairs and see if there's anybody else so how you feeling? who has information that could be useful in our investigation. Um, that looks pretty sealed. Okay, excuse me, Sam. Second floor. Huh, who's this now? Wonder if they could... Ah, who am I kidding? Hello! I believe you may be one of the people I, uh, should speak to. Holy shit, a fresh face. Haven't seen your like in years. Don't know what brought you to the most dangerous corner of this solar system, pal, but you're welcome here. Oh, you talked to Lex yet? She yes. tell you to keep it civil? Also, you yes. You to talk to her, but that lady's got a mean left hook. Right, yes. I talked to her. She mentioned that you were some kind of journalist. Some kind. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Got into reporting thinking I was going to be some sort of public intellectual. What a joke. Spent 95% of my time playing stenographer to the board, and the rest writing puff pieces on the chairman's latest beard trim. Real life and death shit. Okay. How do Byzantium journalists end up stuck in this backwater? What can you tell me about Gorgon? Yeah, actually, why on earth did you come here in the first place? When the project fell apart, Spacer's Choice refused to extract me. They left me here to rot. Listen, I hate asking for handouts, but my back's against the wall here. If you're going back out there, do you think you'd be willing to do an old bastard a small favor? I might. Uh, helping out old bastards is 80% of my job. Not far off the mark, actually. So what do you need? Does this involve going somewhere we don't belong? Probably. Those are my favorite jobs. Well, I've been trying to get away from this rock for five lobby-fucked years, but I can't stay gone. Uh, why? Told you I was a journalist, right? Yes. I was here on a story back when Project Gorgon was active. I was doing an interview series for Spacer's Choice. Recorded them all on these little portable phonographs. But when everything fell to shit, Spacer's Choice wouldn't let me leave. In terms of my reporting contract unmet, they said. Okay. Uh, and what does that have to do with me? You need me to collect them for you. I stashed my interviews around Gorgon when everything went haywire, and now there's about five million marauders between me and them. Look at me, I'm no fighter. I've never even touched a gun. But you, you're just the right amount of rough around the edges. Help me get my recordings back so I can finally get the hell out of here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, it's your lucky day, Roscoe. I'll get those recordings for you. Yes, of course I will. Of course I will. No shit? That's downright civilized of you. I'm a downright civilized right. person. One of them I stash in the Office of Creative Incubation, in the projector room on the third floor. I give another to my friend Birdie to keep in her apartment, just outside OCI's upper entrance. Wait. Why? I mean, I don't mean why did you give it to Birdie or why did you stash it in the, the office? Why did you stash them in different places? Is this so if one of them gets hit by a meteor, you won't lose all of them? I'm going to say that makes sense, but it really doesn't. If I had a bunch of research notes and I wanted to hide them and come back and get them later, I'd hide them in a box in one particular place that was particularly safe and grab them all in one trip. No, fine, fine. Uh, out of curiosity, why there? Why? Seems like a good idea at the time. Someone had started no, a fire, didn't. folks were shooting other folks. It was a madhouse. So what were they going There was a fire going on. People were shooting other people, and you thought, I need to hide my notes. I shall take page one and take it over there. Page two, I should... Really? Really? You didn't think, I need to hide my notes. Where's the cupboard? Shove them in. Lock it. Put a chair in front of it and then run like hell. Really? This explains a lot. Anyway, next. You'll find another in the chem lab. Oh, good grief. It's in the main lab storage room. 
Yeah, look, you ran all over Gorgon just to hide your recordings. Didn't have much of a choice. The primals had gotten loose, couple of them were chasing me. The recordings just ended up wherever I hid. So, basically what you're saying then is you were running around scared hiding from things and each place you hid you stored yet another page or recording. And there's more? Let me guess. One of them is cunningly hidden, strapped to the bottom of some giant creature. The final one is in human inquiry and auditing. Damn it. It's tucked behind a pipe in observation room B. Just a pipe? An ordinary pipe? It's not a super mutant pipe with lasers, by any chance? The observation room, wouldn't someone have seen you? Y yeah, good point. What with the test subjects running loose, the researchers were surprisingly unobservant. Also good point. Sure, um... Strength to your sword arm, friend. And thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, the thing is, is... Hey, there you are. Been wondering how you were doing. I haven't gone anywhere. Did you manage to find those recordings? No, I... I, I, I thought I might ask you something about... Sure. Gorgon itself. Book. Now that I've agreed to help you, and we're on, you know, friendly talking um, circumstances. What's the deal with Lucky Montoya? What was... Uh, Alright, let's go with that. What's the deal with Lucky Montoya? Nice enough guy. Fashioned himself one of those professional gumshoes, like in the serials. They usually work for the board, rooting out dissidents and the like. Lucky, though, he was freelance. Worked for anyone who paid, no matter their allegiance. You ask me, I think the guy just likes snooping around in folks' terminal messages. Is that bad? I mean, you're probably right. It's probably, probably bad. It's probably rude. Oh, well, you could argue it's just, it's just, he took an interest in people. He was a people person. You could argue that. Yes, you could. Did Lucky tell you anything about his investigation? Next to nothing. He preferred to keep a tight lid on things, more dramatic that way. Not that he needed to keep secrets. Folks down here don't give two shits about anything but bits and beer. Uh, okay. Right, not particularly charming or persuasive. Probably because I'm wearing a bloody weird helmet that a marauder should be uh, using. I'm here to take over this case, believe it or not. No shit. And you'll be trying to get into synthesis and manufacturing, I reckon. I'm lucky you've been trying to crack that nut for a while. Supposed to be locked up tight. I thought he didn't tell you anything about his case. Yes! He didn't. I mean, nothing substantial. Just that he was after Olivia Ambrose's old journal, which is supposedly locked up tight in the SMC. Uh, okay, fair enough. S um. Any pointers on how I might get in there? Breaking and entering isn't my area of expertise. Got writerly hands and a cowardly disposition. You could check Lucky's room. He was up on the third floor. Might be he left you some clues. Yeah, no, I've already got those. I was thinking maybe you knew some, some easy way into the place. No, nothing. Okay, what was Gorgon like in its heyday? Frenetic, chaotic, vicious. Take your pick. Sounds kind of fun. I wasn't here at the start, but going off what folks told me about the early days, Gorgon started out with promise. The board's best and brightest were excited to work here, said it was a good posting. The project director had a vision and big, bold ideas. <laughs> uh, the, the best and brightest, sure, got a lot of people killed. I mean, usually the board's decisions get people killed by the looks of things. Sometimes slowly, sometimes rapidly and explosively. As long as the board gets their bits, that's just the cost of doing business. Yeah. The thing is, the schedules coming out of the corporate office were unrealistic from the get-go. And they were trying to do the project on a shoestring budget. Couple that with the obvious personnel problems and toxic junk in the product. It was only a matter of time before it all went to hell. Right. How'd Marauders enter the picture? Spratshack legend has it they crawled out of the mines one day. Heard one fella suggest they might even be aliens. Aliens. Yeah, that, that's a bit of a starlight thing, really, isn't it? Um, what do you think? I think Halcyon wants us dead. 
Look at Monarch. The planet's pure poison. Folks can't eat the food that grows on Terra 2 without getting sick. Okay, well... Who's to say it's not something in the dirt? Or the water? I don't have proof, mind. It's just a hunch. I kind of enjoyed Monarch, to be honest. And um, believe it or not, someone's found ways to grow food here. See? Positive thinking, man. Positive thinking. Positive thinking and science. That's what you need. Gorgon's a ruin now. What sent it over the edge? Lack of positive thinking and science, in my opinion. Shit, any number of things. Fire, primal, sabotage. It didn't happen all at once, but it happened fast enough folks couldn't respond in time. Now, if you're asking how it all kicked off, might have been spies that did it. Corporate espionage, you know, anti-Cleos. I never did figure it out. Not about to try now. Okay. Space Destroyers won't let you leave Gorgon until you deliver the recordings. Right. Oh, I've tried. Make no mistake. I've caught a couple of rides out with Sublight folks. But the board's fixers always send me right back. And I'm not about to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marauders just to fulfill a line item on a contract. So let me get this right. Even if we took you on our ship and just dumped you on the groundbreaker, uh, the board would find you and bring you back here. Okay. Why did you even bother stashing the recordings? I'm going to keep asking this question until I get a sensible answer. No, I'm not, because if I did that, I would probably be here forever, right? I'm going to ask you at least one more time. Someone had been trying to steal them since the day my assistant and I started interviewing. Couldn't even keep them in my safe. They always found a way in. Oh. So I took to hiding them all over the fucking asteroid. Thought I was so clever. Still... What a fool I was. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, but yes. If someone's trying to steal them from you, keep them on you, then the only way they're going to take them from you is if they basically kill you and take them off you. And at that point, really, do you care? In fact, you know what? I'm not even asking that question. Um, you must have talked to a lot of the staff here. What were they working on? Adrena time. I'm sure you know it. Was a drug, something to make folks work harder, work smarter. Had a lot of nasty side effects. Didn't seem so bad to me at the time, but then I hadn't met the test subjects yet. The whole thing was real hush-hush. A lot of worry about corporate spies, especially from anti-Cleos. I probably shouldn't even be mentioning it to you, to be honest. Spacer's choice? They're really not fond of spies. Who is? Um, what do you know about the senior researchers? Not much, except that there was a whole gaggle of them, and so far as I could tell, they absolutely hated each other. Dr. Ambrose would hardly let me speak to any of them, but she complained about him all the time. And what did she complain about? Everything, seemed like. Marion Blakesley, for example, lady who ran HIA, wouldn't return any of her messages. Not once, for years. Jasper Lowe, guy who headed up chem, was high more and he was sober. He insisted on running special tests on primals, too. Law knows what for. Whoa. So, uh, 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 a chemist that was high on his own stuff was running tests on primals. What are we going to meet out there? What are we going to meet out there? Anyone else? Dr. Ambrose really had it out for this guy, Lawrence Goodfellow. Ran OCI. Would lose his shit if he saw red on a schedule. By the end, I heard folks were turning in completely bunk progress reports just to keep him out of their hair. Had this little minion, too. An actuary named Clarence Mosley. Obsessed with quantifying every detail of his sad little life. Okay. Mosley was the guy who got me mixed up in all this. Asshole. I hope a primal ate him. Well, uh, it didn't eat all of them. So there was tension between the researchers. Oh, yeah. It wasn't just that Dr. Ambrose hated them. They seemed to hate each other, too. OCI pushed a ludicrous schedule. Chem made a bad product. And HIA returned garbage results. A regular merry-go-round of shit flying in every direction. It's no surprise it all fell apart. Sounds like half the crews I run with. Not this one, of course. Editor of course. always did say my prose was a bit purple. Or brown, in this case. What? P Never mind. Not a problem. Anything else? No, no. We're, we're good. We're good. I of think. Of course. I won't be going anywhere. So, you know, take your time. I think. Did we. Did. 
Why do I get the feeling there was something else I wanted to ask you? There might be. Can we just... I just want to make sure. I mean, make sure. We spoke... Did you manage to find those recordings? I haven't left. I'm standing here. I'm, I'm investigating, remember? Investigating. I'm just wondering... Sure, I'm an open book. Is there anything I haven't spoken to you about? No. No, there's not. Not a problem. Okay, I'm just... Else? I'm... I'm being thorough. I'm being thorough. Be safe out there. Now, there's one other person I'm supposed to speak to. A lady. Name begins with L. I believe she's on the first floor, actually. So, lots of intrigue, gossip, backstabbing, etc. Oh, maybe it was this floor. Um, yeah. Lots of infighting going on here, so pretty much... Well, pretty much every workplace ever created. Um, okay. Hi. You don't look like one of the salvagers, oh. you know? Don't really seem like the type. Damn it, I meant to take my helmet off. You've got the look of someone who's traveled far to get here and whose journey is far from over. Yeah, it's the silly helmet, isn't it? I, 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 I've got, I've got, a, I've got, a, I've got a, uh, never mind. What makes you say that? Apart from the helmet. Confidence. The scavengers around here, they're faking it. You're the real deal. I don't know if you're bound for the old runes, but... In case you are, can you look into something? I'd do it myself, but of course, the marauders would eat me alive. Right, right, right. You, you need me to find something for you. I bet you could stand your ground. Depends on what you need. I bet you could... She doesn't look like she could stand at all. Depends on what you need. It doesn't really. I'm going to say yes. It doesn't matter whether it's... Could you please collect various parts of a chain that is dear to me and they are in 15,000 different places around the galaxy? I'm, I'm going to say yes. So, just just tell me what you need. Um, looking for something out there. Been paying Sublight to help me, but they haven't made much progress. This something. Okay, Sublight wouldn't turn over a rock unless there was salvage underneath it. No, okay, this something must be valuable, at least to you. It is to me, but apparently it's junk to Sublight. My husband and I worked on Gorgon during the good times. Jerome was on maintenance duty. I cleaned out test tubes till they sparkled. Okay. Um, right. Where's Jerome now? Nowhere good. That's for sure. In his final hours, Gorgon was a war zone. Violence broke out in the labs. The hills were full of marauders. You couldn't take a leisurely stroll without an armed escort. When the order came through to evacuate, Non-essential personnel drew a lottery to see who would board the first wave of ships. Jerome won. I lost. As soon as I wasn't looking, Jerome switched our tickets and pushed me to the front of the line. I got to leave. Jerome stayed behind. I never saw him again. Okay. I, I would like to apologize for my flippant uh, attitude earlier. Um, I've been having one of those days. Um, right... Yeah, that was pretty noble of him. That Jerome always chose the right thing, even when it got him killed. This place is greedy. It took my Jerome, and it would have taken me too. I just want one thing back. His old hip flask. I gave it to him the day we signed our marriage contract, and he carried it wherever he went. I know it's still here. Right. Uh, what do you think happened to Jerome? I'm guessing nothing good. No point in denying it. He died on this rock. Likely torn apart by marauders, unless he took care of himself on his own terms. I don't like to imagine what happened, but I know I have to accept it. Um, yes. We will definitely keep an eye out for that flask. You'd really do that for me? Law. And I'll bet you're worth ten of those sublight sprats. I don't have much, but if you help me, there's a little set aside for the occasion. Jerome used to drink with his buddies in a small kitchen opposite the maintenance shed. Might be a good place to check first. Um, sh we, yes, absolutely, um, maintenance shed. I can't remember what, is that outside? There are some buildings I was going to check outside. Um, I wanted to ask you something first. Yeah? Um... 
Yeah, did you know someone called Lucky Montoya? That old flirt? Yeah, I let him buy me a drink or two. He talked my ear off about exciting jobs he'd done. All lies, I'm sure. He fell asleep with his head on my shoulder. That man had baggage like you wouldn't believe. I didn't think anyone could be lonelier than me. Right. Was he depressed? Was he depressed? He put on quite a front, but I think he was weary. Like he'd seen too much and had too little to show for it. I guess we were kindred spirits in a way. Right. Did he mention anything about Gorgon Research Facility? He bragged about having the key to some sort of maintenance area in one of the old buildings. I never saw it, so I just assumed he was talking himself up. He also asked if I wanted to see something gross and slimy he kept in his room, but I declined, politely. Okay, um, that was probably a wise idea, although it, it, it's, it's probably not what you think. I'd say it was worse, but honestly, considering what's going on right now, I couldn't say for sure. Um, and on that note, sure thing. I'm gonna My be condolences if you two were close. C um, close. Well, in some ways, we're we're pretty close right now. Um, tell me about your time on Gorgon. The lab coats kept quiet about the project, but the air was charged with excitement. You could feel it wherever you went. They wanted to change the world. A tenfold boost to worker productivity with no side effects? Who wouldn't salivate at the thought? I don't the know. The workers, what went wrong, probably. But when the shit hit the fan, it sprayed everyone in its path, including me. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You've been, um. very, very helpful. Okay. I I should take that as a bit of a learning experience that not everybody I meet here is an annoying idiot who deserves to be mocked. Granted, most people here are probably going to be idiots who deserve to be mocked, but occasionally I'm going to meet somebody who tells me a story that actually makes me want to go out and hit people with a hammer.